Wine Moms, I have an announcement. Are you ready? Eek! I don't know if I am. I've been working so hard on this behind the scenes. But here we are. Drum roll, please. I have officially launched the MW Wine Club. The Wine Club is a member-based virtual happy hour where we together try new sips, learn from real wine industry professionals, trade wine and cocktail recipes, and connect with fellow wine moms. We even play games, host contests and giveaways, and so much more. Come join in on the fun and learn some wine industry trade secrets. Shh. With novice to master wine lovers alike. As the world opens up, you may even begin to find me exploring wineries across Napa Valley. Register for the MW Wine Club at themommywines.com. I can't wait to see you there. We're back with another episode of Mommy Wines with your favorite wine mom, Emma Dawn. Tune in while she shares her motherhood experiences, introduces you to motivational and empowering special guests, and sips away your sins. In the Mommy Wines Confessional, mom life can sometimes get lonely and overwhelming, so she created this relatable, inclusive, and supportive space for us to be ourselves. Let loose, enjoy a glass of wine, and laugh. Get ready for today's episode. Here's Emma. Hi, wine moms, and welcome back to another episode of the Mommy Wines Podcast. I am your host, as always, Emma Dawn, and in today's episode, I sit down and have a incredible conversation with fellow freelancer, Tiffany Jones. Tiffany and her husband are the founders and directors of the Kenza Collective, which is a freelance coaching agency. Basically, what they do is they show folks just like you how to go from working for the man to working for yourself. I had to have them on the show when I found them on Instagram. And it's because I've done the same exact thing. I needed to shift my career into something a bit more flexible with more professional freedom and that is what brought me working remote. And they needed the exact same thing. In this episode, we get into what it is like to be a female in the workplace, especially a mother, and why they made this shift in their lifestyle. So make sure you stay tuned for this episode with Tiffany Jones. Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh, you have... AirPods, you're so fancy. <laughs> you know, my husband had them for like a year before I did, and he kept being like, "Just get them, just get them." I'm like, "They're so expensive. I don't need to do it." Blah blah blah. And finally, I just got them, and now I love them. See, I'm a bookkeeper by trade, um, so I get like a panic attack anytime I spend more than a hundred dollars, unless it's on wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but mine are soundproof. <laughs> And, um, these zoom recordings are super new. My first zoom, um, podcast ever was the one I just did a couple hours ago with Lauren Venna. She is a, um, author and makeup artist. Oh, um, cool. so I plugged my microphone in cause I'm like, oh my God, I have this microphone. I need to start using it, but COVID yeah. had everything remote. Um, and then I'm like, you know what? Every other podcast I listen to is always complaining about like zoom and whatever. I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like the face to face ish is like so needed because when I record over the anchor app, it's just like a phone call. Oh, it's just audio. Yeah. I can tell you the app I use and you can check it out. Uh, what is that? It's called Riverside FM. And oh, I, reason, I think I heard about it. I saw an ad okay. for them on Instagram. 
Yeah, um, they have a couple kinks, but the, it's pretty good. The The reason that we switched to them was because we've started posting our podcast on YouTube also. Oh, um, see, I've been doing that too. Yeah, and so what was happening was Zoom like is dependent on the internet quality to record the video and audio. And it just, just kept coming out crappy and like ruining our recordings essentially, which oh. is like the last thing you want. See, that's the problem I had with the Anchor app is it would kind of um, get real laggy if we did over mm -hmm. like 30 minutes. Yeah. And with wine and women, we get chatty. So it's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's more than 30 <laughs> minutes. Um, so it would like start overlapping audio or there would be like Ugh. really long pauses and then all the audio would be combined into like a couple oh seconds. Oh my gosh. It, it was bad. It was like an editing nightmare. Oh my gosh. So I'm like, well, if exactly Caitlin Bristow and the lady gang can use Zoom, so can I. So yeah. here we are, we're trying out Zoom. And I have totally. these soundproof headphones because uh, I have a toddler and I Same. work. Um, <laughs> I've been using them and I feel like I'm like back in the nineties listening to like Mariah <laughs> <Totally>. Carey. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I mean, the thing with what's nice about anchor, the reason I'm not anchor, um, Riverside, the reason they're different is because they, yes, we're obviously like meeting via an internet connection, but the way right. it's recording audio and video is locally to each person's computer. Mm. so it does not even if the internet drops or cuts out or like you freeze or they freeze it does not mess up your like if they kept talking you know it's still recording them perfectly and then what it gives you is you can download the audio file an hd video file um and then they even create like backup files just in case something happens with those and so it's all these or you can just download the video and audio all together, which is usually what I do, which is totally fine. Um, and it's just like super high quality and the internet doesn't matter. It is like 39 bucks a month. So it's not as cheap, you know, as Zoom, but um, yeah, see how it goes for you and give it a shot if this isn't working for you. Yeah, definitely. I'll have to think about it. I'll, yeah. try, I'll try editing Zoom out because that's like double the price. And I'm like, well, double the price, double the quality, but who knows? Yeah, yeah. see in, how this works for you. You're in California, but I'm in like the middle of nowhere, desert, um, mountain pickup trucks. Um, <laughs> Where are you? I'm in a small town out in Ruby Valley, Nevada. Okay, cool. So like Northern high desert, Nevada, um, okay. not Las Vegas. Everyone thinks I live in Las Vegas. No, there's, <laughs> there's more than one town in the state of Nevada. <laughs> what? I know, right? <laughs> like you must be from LA since you live in California, right? Totally. You live in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, cheers, by the way. Oh yeah. Cheers. Have you been looking for the right opportunity to finally leave behind your daunting nine to five and live that laptop lifestyle you've been dreaming of? No, no, no. This isn't another get-rich-quick scheme or some MLM. What I'm talking about here is bookkeeping. And yes, you heard me right. Bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is how I am able to live my life without choosing between a career and my son. And how I am living and working around a schedule that's best for our lives, not someone else or office hours. Bookkeeping is one of the oldest administrative positions around making this not only a common and respected career choice, but with today's technology and cloud-based programs, a position that's in demand and able to be done from anywhere. Bookkeeping is perfect for parents who want or need to work from home, military spouses who have no idea where they're going to be next, college students. If you're studying finance, why not get real on-the-job experience now? retirees, and frequent travelers. Maybe you don't want to carry around a lot of inventory or you don't want to do any heavy lifting. This is perfect. You can work wherever you're connected. Basically, anyone who wishes to leave behind the chains of a cubicle, go ahead and check out edjconsultinggroup.com. My home bookkeeping masterclass is available under the resources page. 
But if you would like to join my team of remote bookkeepers, check out the My Team page at edjconsultinggroup.com. I purposefully scheduled this in February because we did a dry January. And I was like, I'm not going on the Mommy Wines podcast and being like, I'm sorry, it's dry January, I can't drink, you know. Oh, I've heard people talk about that on Instagram, but I'm like, that is toxic. I don't need that in my life. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's a lot of work. (laughs) The first week and the last week are the worst because, you know, you're just so close to the end. You're like, come on, just a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had a, I've had quite a few um, like health gurus and fitness people on the show before. So they always promote like, oh, you know, like don't restrict yourself during the holidays, like enjoy your mm-hmm. family, enjoy your friends, um, you know, make memories baking in the kitchen and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh my God, you're such a good person. Like, good for you. And then they come into January and I'm like, no, that's trash. Stop talking to me. Like, <laughs> exactly. Because they're doing these like detox juice cleanses and they're like, mm-hmm. you know, it's all about balance. And I'm like, no, no, sorry. Yeah. That's trash. Get out of here. <laughs> but I'm excited to have you on and I, the one thing I love about Zoom is that I can have my phone because I posted oh, yeah. a thing on my Instagram um, today for the first time. I did this whole um, preview for all of my followers on who's coming on the podcast. And I posted those little question boxes. Uh-huh. And I've never done that before. It's the first time I've done it. And I did it for everybody I'm recording with this weekend. And cool. to my surprise, people ask questions. Nice. I'm like, so we're going off grid ish. Like we're not totally cool. crunchy, but we're going to be yeah. moving towards that. Um, I love it. And when we build our cabin, Milo said, he's like, mommy, when we build our house, um, can we get chickens? And I was like, um, no birds <laughs> are the devil. Uh, <laughs> I don't want anything that could like beak me like within <laughs> two acres of Thank my you. residence. Um, <laughs> but he's like, Oh, I, I think birds are really cool. Um, I think we should get birds. And I was like, fine. So I posted it on Instagram <laughs> and like two people voted and I'm like, and I've done that before. Like, I'm like, yeah, okay, no, I'm I feel you stuck in life. Like help me out. And nobody ever interacts with stories. Isn't like I feel weird. Like I love it when people put yeah. stuff on their stories. Like I am the first person to be like voting, uh, how people should get like their nails done or what color <laughs> hair dye yeah. looks best on them. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I'm all about it. Give me an interactive story all day long. Yeah. But I post stuff in like, it, it, it gets all the, like so many people see it, but like, do they vote? No. So it's like so weird. It's like click a what? button. It's just right yeah, there. Why just not? do it. Go vote on my stories. God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they voted. So apparently we're getting chickens. But also, um, oh, no. I posted those little previews before mm-hmm. we started recording. So now we have questions to answer during our episode. Amazing. I love oh, it. No. I was shocked too. <laughs> cool. Yeah, no, I feel like I'm so like, we recorded an episode about um, just getting prepared for taxes. And I'm like, we're going to be picking the brain of a tax professional. Like what small business tax questions do you have? And like oh. two people answer. And I'm like, come on, I will a- ask your question. Mom. You get free advice. Like, oh why would God. you not ask a question? Taxes are the story said, yeah. of my life. Um, <sighs> and this is the first year I think in years that I actually filed my, like I filed my taxes already. My personal, my taxes. Yes. You can do that early this early. Yeah. I filed already. And so amazing. Um, so, well, I'm a, I'm a bookkeeper, so I do my own bookkeeping. (laughs) So I'm like, well, that's done. Like I'm done. But I, because I do all of this, like the fourth quarter for me is so stressful And like, I kind of let my own stuff fall in the background. So Hmm. I normally file an extension for myself, but here I am in like October telling my clients like, oh, don't file an extension. That's just asking for an audit. Yeah. And there I am every year, you know, it's kind of like, 
Um, I need to start putting on my own face mask first before I like <laughs> yeah, save other totally. people on the plane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I filed my, my taxes already and I'm like, Oh my God. Like I feel Good so job. adult. Thank you. Yeah. That's incredibly adult. I know. I'm really <laughs> proud of it. <laughs> I wouldn't be talking about it if I wasn't really proud of it, but I'm like super proud of it. Good. You should be. But I'm like, I shouldn't because it's like, I make the most money during like October to April. Like I don't make anything after that. Basically. Like I do like a little bit here and there, like monthly recording and stuff, but right. That's like my big time. Right. I should love it, but no, I don't work for it. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Yeah. The Fetching Barker is owned and operated by Milo, my four-year-old son and inspiration behind all that I do. Zeppelin, our rescue ESA golden doodle, and myself, your wacky and adventurous wine sipping podcast host. Shop the most fetching and eco friendly, natural, and handcrafted dog supplies. The Fetching Barker has everything your pup needs and so much more. From toys to travel essentials, a wide line of CBD and hemp products, snacks and treats, and so much more. Shop your favorite brands like Pet Head, Beko Pets, Papilla, Petalton Pet, or find new brands that I'm sure you're going to love. Visit thefetchingbarker.com and feel good that a portion of all profits go to support global conservation efforts. That's thefetchingbarker.com. So many people, including myself, have gotten so creative um, through the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And- and like, especially when it comes to working, uh, like I took my company fully remote, um, during the pandemic, but then I also like started a pet supply boutique and oh, cool. <laughs> I started another podcast. <laughs> I'm like, nice. okay, I feel like now that, uh, coronavirus is coming to an end and I can't use that as an excuse to stay in my house anymore. I know. Uh, <laughs> so sad. My Um, brother and I just had that conversation. We're like, he's like, yeah, grandma just got hers. My mom just got hers. And then, and then we're like, that's cool. We're like, or the vaccine, you know? And I'm like, that's cool. It's like, it's like, yay, they got the vaccine. And like, now they're going to want to come see us. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine Imagine how much time you're going to have to spend with your family in like a month. It's already happening. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've, I've just like, I was just talking about this in the last recording I did and I like am thriving yeah. in coronavirus. I'm totally. like, sorry. Um, I can't hang I out with you. Friends. It's a pandemic. I, I, I miss the only thing I miss is eating out. Um, yeah. and in Salt Lake, it was nice because we had Instacart and DoorDash and all the things, but now that we're living in the middle of nowhere, Literally, like if you were to look out my window, there's not a, a building. There's like a small convenience store style supermarket um, and like houses. My next door neighbors are three horses. Um, <laughs> so like there's not a lot going on out here. We definitely yeah. don't have Instacart. We definitely don't have DoorDash. Um, so like one of the things I do miss is like eating out. But yeah, now it was just nice because I'd be like, oh yeah, sorry. Um, we can't hang out because like my kid is sick and now it's yeah. like, sorry, mm, pandemic, social yeah. distancing. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's could be deadly. It's could a pandemic. Deadly. Yeah. I just, I'm trying to be responsible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> as I chug my wine. <laughs> <laughs> right. Trying to be real <laughs> responsible. I'm getting my wine delivered now. It's responsibility. Yeah. Um, I'm doing my part. So mm-hmm. order one hope. <laughs> he leaves it on the porch and I'm super distanced from him. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wine moms. I am proud to say and celebrate that One Hope Wines has reached over $6 million in donations. One Hope's award-winning wines are made by some of the most acclaimed winemakers in the industry. Blending traditional winemaking methods with modern techniques, each exquisite bottle becomes a catalyst for change. 
One Hope's commitment to high-quality wine is just as important as their commitment to the causes they support. Through the sale of every bottle, One Hope has donated over $6 million to impactful causes around the world. They have built a school in Guatemala, funded over 19,000 days of clinical trials for breast cancer research, planted an entire forest in Indonesia, provided over 3 million meals for children in need, and found over 80,000 pets forever homes. If you're going to sip, then sip with purpose. OneHopeWines.com backslash my shop backslash mommy wines. And if you have a cause that you would like to support, send me a message on Instagram. I would love to host a wine fundraiser with you. Check out the link in the show notes below. Now I understand we lived up in the mountains of Santa Cruz, California for the last six years. So we were like a good half hour from like civilization in general, which was nice. nice. And then now we're like down in the thick of it in Oceanside, Southern California. And we're thriving with like, Oh, what, what is this DoorDash thing? What is Uber (laughs) Eats? Like, what are all these conveniences? We could get weed delivered to our front door here. Like, what is this life? Yeah. So it has been nice to like come out of that six year forest land, uh, you know, and explore <laughs> the modern day conveniences. <laughs> I feel like I would have really thrived in Salt Lake city. Um, if I only had lived there through the pandemic, uh, mm-hmm. because then I like, didn't have to talk to anybody. Nobody yeah. wanted to talk to me. Uh, just the fact that I have brown hair, everybody's like, mm, well, mm, <sighs> yeah. You're, uh, yeah, you're probably not Mormon, so I'm just going to avoid you at yeah. Target anyway. Um, <laughs> and every everything is so, like, regulated by zip code there. Um, so, like, only a few blocks of people, like, go to one church. So, like, the communities are so, like, tight-knit that if they don't recognize you or know you on, like, a first-name basis, you're, like, the devil. So, oh my gosh. I, me and my son were shunned. Uh <laughs> Like instantly, like the second we moved there. Because you didn't have a big, strong husband with you to show that. First sin, not being married. Um, People would like, I would even like meet people in like play groups and stuff. The first thing uh, like a neighbor of mine sent me to was she's like, oh, if you're going to move, you know, if you're new here and like you have a baby, you should join this Facebook group. And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, a mommy group, like kill me now. I know, <laughs> um, I know what you mean. <laughs> so she like sent me an invite to join this non LDS mom group. And I was like, okay, oh, like that okay. might be better, you know, than what I was expecting being, you know, a normal person who tr- yeah. like transplanted to Utah. <laughs> a non LDS um, person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and then I get there and I meet up with a couple people and the first thing they do is they're like, oh, well, you know, if you're not LDS, what church do you go to? Oh, and I'm gosh. like, well, I, I, like, I don't like I'm down with the big guy, but like, I'm a bit lapsed in like all things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> like there's that. And then they're like, oh yeah, well, um, how, what brought you here? What does your husband do? Oh, and I was like, um, well, I moved here on my own free will, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I happened to run a business and I got clients here and my husband doesn't do anything because he doesn't exist. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, wow. So, so like, it's just you. It's just like you and a baby and like you live mm-hmm. here. I'm um, like, uh, and you run a business. You like run a business. You like work. Like, what do you do with your, <laughs> yeah. you, like you work what do you do with your kid when you like work and like they say work like it's like like a rot they just took a bite out of like a rotten hard-boiled egg like work ew okay that's like a really gross like analogy (laughs) no one's ever said that to me before and now I'm gonna be thinking about that work so (laughs) yeah (laughs) and they're like and now I just get all these people because I'm sure they listen to this and I'm like, at this point, like I've been out of Utah since August, they must be hate listening 
Um, <laughs> this is like not like the first time I've brought this up, yeah. but they're just like, oh my God, I don't know how you balance it. I don't know how you do it. I don't, I, I'm like, when you have to do things that you have yeah. to do, you just have to do them. You just do it. <laughs> like you figure it out. Yeah. And that actually brings me to one of the questions that. Yeah, user questions. Let's do it. Yes. So let me find your thing. Here we go. So one of the questions was, actually, let's start with this. And it's. Okay what does Kenza Collective do? And the second question is what started it? Oh, okay. Can I go in reverse? Sure. Maybe the second, the first. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what started it was having a child, honestly. So, um, I had my baby and the plan was to, for me to go back to work, um, when she, so she was born at the end of August, I was going to go back to work, um, around November, like mid to late November and help close out the studio. I was working at a creative agency. I was the producer there. So I was going to help kind of close out the end of the year. And my husband was going to stay home with our daughter for those six weeks. And then starting in January, after the holidays, we were going to put her in daycare. And so all that went according to plan and that was all good. And we had toured the daycare and all this kind of stuff. And so then come January, I put her, we put her in a daycare and she was like four months old. And I just couldn't handle it. I completely shocked myself. I thought I was going to be one of those moms that was like, I want to be a career woman. Like I was doing really well, like really excelling. And like, I have this baby and I'm going to be a career woman, all this kind of stuff. I was like pumping three times a day at work. I was like pump on my drive into work oh, and have God. like, you know, eight ounces. By the time I pulled up, I would like plug it into my cigarette lighter. No joke. Like it <laughs> oh was my a whole God. thing because I had like a 30 minute commute, you know? I love this visual. And then like, I would like get into the parking garage and I knew that like some of my colleagues, other people I knew might be there. So I'd like have to bend down and like undo, you know, so my boobs weren't just everywhere, you know, and then undo, you know, from my nursing bra. Anyway, so it's it was a so whole thing. awkward. I feel <laughs> it was like so awkward. <laughs> I stayed, I stayed home with Milo for a year and a half and pumping. I would, it's Ugh. just like an, the most unnatural. I felt like a dairy cow. It's the worst. It's, it's the not worst. a very like natural feeling thing, but it's like, no. you know, something that benefits your baby. Like he only yeah. breastfed for eight months, but he was on breast milk for like over 12. So I'm That's like, amazing. yeah, I reached my 12 month goal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just exactly. barely like I'm like the tortoise crossing the line. Um, yeah. But like. It's not a cute look, you know, no. it's not comfortable. It's no. oftentimes painful if you're pumping as much as I was, which I was like, yeah. there are dairy cows, you know, happy cows live in California, whatever. I was not a happy yeah. cow. I no. was a beaten, abused, you know, <laughs> Smith's milk dairy cow. And yeah. it, it, it was a sad life. Like I would, I lived at home, like I stayed home with him. Um, because I made the transition out here and my practice wasn't remote at the time. Um, so it was like, I would close my curtains. Like I couldn't even imagine like commuting and, and, and pumping. Like, I'm so I glad know. I, I know. like, I didn't have to go immediately back. People definitely back. saw something weird happening. Oh you my know? God. And I'm just like picturing like California traffic. Cause I lived in California for a little bit and I feel like yeah. no matter where I went from like San Francisco, LA to San Diego, there's like traffic yeah. and it's not like just like a suburban traffic. It is like city traffic. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> worst LA's would be like if there was a construction zone and I had to like stop and wait for the <gasps> sign person or something, you know, that's Salt Lake city. <laughs> They're always fixing something. so so anyway so I did that whole thing for a while we took her to daycare and I just I couldn't handle it but I also wanted to keep working and I just that was a problem you know so what was I going to do so what I ended up doing was I talked to my current employer and I put together this whole plan it was a small business there was only like nine of us Um, and I put together this plan of like hey I want to have a more flexible work schedule for, I gave, I even said like maybe only six months or something while I have this baby while I'm nursing and all that kind of stuff. 
I, you know, I mapped it all out and I just like, I put together this whole plan and they were just like, yeah, sorry, we can't do that. Like if we do that for you, then we have to do that for everyone. And they just, they gave just bullshit excuses as to why they couldn't accommodate a new mom. And I was so bummed about that because I was really close with them. I felt like, um, I knew that I had done a lot of really great work. I'd been there for over three years and I was just really disappointed by that. And, and at the same time, I, I did at some level understand their position, you know, and it was just like, we were both in bad positions. Like neither one of us had a good, good, we're in a good place to make a good decision there. So I ended up going out on my own as, as a freelance project manager and it's still what I do now. And once I really got the hang of it, which was a little bit more, a lot more easier for me because I was running a really busy creative agency. And so I took all of those skills of writing. I mean, I wrote our six figure proposals, you know, I managed incredibly complex web and graphic design and development projects, app development projects. I would have like 10 projects spinning at a time, managing our internal team, managing all of our clients, managing, you know, working with the owner, writing proposals, doing all that kind of stuff. So I, I was able to translate that all into my own freelance business. And I was immediately making more money and working less hours and integrating my work life with my mom life, you know? And I was like, oh my God, everyone needs to know that they can do this. Like parents need to know that this is a viable option for them. They can figure this out and they don't have to be stuck in a job that is not only not giving them the flexibility that they really need in order to show up for their kids in the way they want, but that they can also learn how to take their skill set, their existing skill set, their existing network, and move that into a really profitable freelance business. And so what I started wanting to do and what I did start doing with a lot of my like close friends was coaching them on like, okay, how do you manage clients? How do you write proposals? What, tell me about that really tricky client situation that just came up and how you handled it. Let's talk about maybe how to do that differently or how to prevent that from happening in the first place by writing a better proposal. You know, there's a lot of nuance in there. Um, and so from there, that's kind of how Kenzo was born. You know, I was just like, I want to help other parents figure this out. And so I teamed up with Beth Gummery, who's our CFO. She's been in business. She's like, she's like the older sister we all wish we had. So she's been in business for like 25 years as a bookkeeper. Um, and she's, you know, really turned a lot of businesses around. She saved a lot of businesses from the brink of just complete financial ruin and untangled all that mess. So she comes in and teaches people how to manage the financial side of things, the tax side of things, and how to just avoid those early mistakes and, and set yourself up for success by doing, you know, as you know, as a bookkeeper, you know, just really regular oh, yeah. upkeep on what you're doing. And then I come in on the, you know, client management, um, mindset, energy management, time management, proposal writing, that whole side of things and help teach people about that. And it's all around parent's perspective, because you can find a lot of information about freelancing. Oh, I can just sit on the beach and travel wherever I'm in Thai, you know, Thailand right now, like working on my laptop. Freelance life is awesome. It's like, cool. I have a two-year-old who has a poopy diaper right now. Um, but that's cool. I slept like three hours last night, but have fun in your freelance hashtag freelance life, you know? Yeah. So, um, so happy for you. Okay. I have to tell you a secret. Coffee is literally one of my food groups. Having my son home with me all year, expanding my practice, EDJ Consulting Group, relaunching my super fun and spooky podcast, Tales After Dark, and running our eco-friendly pet shop, The Fetching Barker, it's honestly what keeps me moving and retaining the little bit of sanity I have left. Coffee Over Cardio is my go-to lifesaver. It's owned and operated by female entrepreneur, Abby Scott, and it's all carb-free, sugar-free, keto-friendly, and gluten-free. Like, seriously? It's totally guilt-free. With super fun flavors like birthday cake, cinnamon bun, French toast, vanilla hazelnut, my favorite, and so many more, you can't go wrong. Coffee over cardio even has all your coffee accessories like tumblers, frothers, creamers, and my must-have hydrate that you can add to coffee or water. 
upping the flavor and the hydration with electrolytes. Abby is seriously a genius. Get 10% off when you use code 10 Amazon and free shipping on orders over 85. Once again, that's code 10 Amazon. The link is in the show notes below. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so there's just, I found that there's not a ton of resources out there that really understand what it's like to run a business where you're dealing with clients and dealing with kids and family and life and how to make sure that you maintain those boundaries appropriately so that you save that precious mental energy for yourself and for your family, you know, not spend it all on your clients and and that side of things. So I feel like one, um, yeah. one of the things that I have implemented, like you said, with the bookkeeper that you work with, um, is business development. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed one of the things, especially when I was working at Key Bank, because I have a mortgage background, the okay. mortgage department of Key Bank. Sorry if you're going to get offended, Key Bank, when I'm calling you out on your shit. But um, one of the reasons why, even though I was hired for a remote position to help, mm-hmm. you know, develop a new position within the company. Uh, they didn't want me working remotely was because I had a child and they thought that if I was working remotely, that I wouldn't be dedicating the time to my job as I would if I didn't have children. And I feel like that is so untrue Yeah, because like like, it, it is like the opposite. Like if I'm working remotely and it's not like I was working on developing this position that needed to be done within a nine to five schedule, Mm -hmm. you know? So unfortunately my son has decided to not take naps anymore. Um, it's it's a devastating time for us. Um, (laughs) we're really grieving this loss right now. You need to do a (laughs) memorial service. I feel some sage and just really kumbaya around that. Um, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really hard time in our family and we've been really <laughs> grieving this loss. Um, but <laughs> but one of the things that he's doing differently now is instead of going to bed at like nine or 10, he's now going to bed at seven. Mm. And I am like, wow. So I just like get to hang out with you all day, do fun stuff all day, not have to worry about coming back home for a nap you know? Yeah. Totally. So now we have been going out, we've been exploring ghost towns and looking at different properties and we've been cool. taking these day trips that like we couldn't have taken before because we had to be back for him to take yeah. a nap. Right. Um, totally understand. Yeah. So now we're like, we have the entire day. We have 12 hours. We could basically go to Lake Tahoe and back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have all this free time. Oh my God. Um, so even though it's, it's like devastating, any parents out there who are listening, uh, no, who have a kid that's like over, I don't know, three, four years old, you're going to soon find out your whole life is going to change when, you know, your kid stops taking a nap. Yeah, totally. (laughs) I know. Like a little thing, but it's like, I, we had like this schedule down where we would like go yeah. like, run little errands and we were so like kind of chained to our house We'd, like mm-hmm. run little errands maybe go to a neighborhood park come back take a nap I would get a little bit of work done because there's always that like calm down adjust yourself your kid is sleeping right. Right. like they're fully asleep they're not gonna wake yeah. up and go back and <laughs> yeah. wake up go back yeah. and then you have like maybe an hour of work time in the middle of the day and then your kid wakes up and you're like, okay, well now we're going to do this. Now we're going to yeah. cook dinner. Now Switch we're going to bring it back. Yeah. yeah. Do whatever. Um, I don't know. I just, I think it's such a cop out when big companies, especially things like mortgage industry employees, mm-hmm. um, any like back end collections, um, back end processing, uh, even closers, like I, if I was a closer and if I had the say of what would be the most efficient, 
even if they wanted to do in-person closings, which most financial institutions don't even do anymore, mm-hmm. I would just like schedule like one or two or like one day a week, one day a month, whatever, depending on your institution and just be like, oh yeah, I'm going to be at this branch. We're going to schedule all these closings and then be done with it. Like yeah. it, it would save and being a bookkeeper and especially working with small businesses, I always look at their output and I'm mm-hmm. like, you're spending so much money on utilities, on supplies, yeah. on yeah. office rental, uh, like, you know, the office space, right. um, things like internet connection and filling up the break room with yeah. water, coffee, coffee, yeah. snacks, all yeah. of this stuff and all of this office supplies, right. Mm-hmm. That. I'm like, what is your hesitation? And before COVID, I was like literally grinding my teeth at night. Like, what is your hesitation? Why do you need these people in your office? Like, just let them work from home. Yeah. Or wherever. Let like, let me work from home. I don't even want to be here in fucking Utah. Like, let me go back to freaking living my life. Yeah. I don't want to fucking be here. Uh, (laughs) Like, why? Why is this? And and I feel like and then COVID happened, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. He's like, they're like, oh, no, like it, you can't pull these fake excuses out of your ass anymore. It's a government regulation. Mm-mm. Yeah, exactly. CDC says social distancing, work from home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. (laughs) But I feel like now that COVID has happened, it's given these companies a chance to kind of like get off their high horse Mm -hmm. because I feel like it was a power thing. I feel like people in totally, it was a fear thing. Yeah. It was a, I think it was a fear thing of like, and even one of my clients I work with has, you know, this is, it's a struggle to manage remote teams, especially if you go from in-person to remote, you feel like you lose all control over your people. You feel like you don't know what people are doing. Are they actually working? And depending on the type of leader that's there, like there, they, some leaders may assume the worst, you know? And that was my thing. Like, it's like a power thing. Like people like to, especially those managers that are micromanagers, Mm-hmm. you know, it, it, people who crave that control and I, I don't want to call yeah. them like narcissists, but a lot of people who are, who have narcissistic ten, tendencies end up in management positions. Totally. And if there's somebody who's nitpicking at you all the time and they enjoy that power and they thrive yeah. on it and they show yeah. up every day at their office and they are just there to be in charge. Yeah. May, like obviously they're not cut out for post pandemic workspace. Totally. Um, totally. <laughs> they need to readjust. But that was also one of the things that when I took a poll on my website um was something that people hated. Mm-hmm. They don't feel appreciated when they're micromanaged. They don't feel yeah. like they're accomplishing anything when there's a manager at the end of the day telling them only the things that they've done wrong. Right. Um it's just like a toxic environment. Totally toxic. And what going back to what you said about like the company that thought that you wouldn't get as much done because you have a kid or something, that's that's just so frustrating to me because it's if you look at parents and what we do throughout a day, when especially working parents, and even if you're not a working parent, we are we are managing a household. We are managing the most like crazy of employees, <laughs> which are our children, you know, yeah, like employees that can't even communicate coasters. with you. Yeah, exactly. And like the amount of multitasking, the amount of like efficiency that parents have to have is just incredible. And so it's like parents are the best types of employees or the best types of contractors, in my opinion. Um, And that's something that I like to try and teach people that we're working with is like, you have what it takes to get this going. You can figure this out, your experience, your network, your brain, you know, you have it all. Let's help you just put it all together and help other companies see that too. But a big part of it is really 
you know, protecting yourself and protecting your energy because you can get those clients just because you're out of the main workforce doesn't mean that you might not get hired by that narcissistic manager that you're talking about. And they could be expecting a lot more out of you, you know? So you have to be careful about who you even choose to work with, but that's also the beauty of freelancing or, you know, contracting. You don't have to take on every client. Yeah. You get that choice. As many of you know, finance is my profession when I'm not here laughing, sipping, and chatting with all of you. I have over a decade of financial industry experience, and financial wellness is such a passion of mine. Like many things in the world, finances tend to look a little differently for women, even in today's generation. Webull has simplified the stock market and investing game with an easy-to-navigate, zero-commission platform that has free, real-time quotes, multi-platform accessibility, 24-7 online help, and extended trading hours. If you're looking to increase your financial portfolio and set up your retirement IRA and start investing in yourself, click the link in the show notes below to receive two free stocks on me. And one of the things I was just thinking about earlier today is, um, I was thinking about it when I was driving in my car and I was thinking about when I first started working in finance, when I first started getting licenses and when I first started working, um, like I first started like making money and I don't know, I was like, I worked really hard because I was like, wow, like I, I've never made this much money before. And like yeah. you, you're hungry when you're in your early twenties. Yeah. Um, So I had that like overachieving hunger, you know, I was like, yeah, I want the next promotion. I'm chasing this lifestyle. I'm making this money that I had never made before because yeah, before that I was in college before that I worked at pizza hut. So, (laughs) (laughs) exactly, you know, I'm chasing this thing. And then, but like, I remember, oh my God, I would work hard, but I would like play harder. Yeah. But now my goals are entirely different. And I have Mm -hmm. this, like, I gave up working in corporate America because I was like, this is draining. I can't keep up with it. You know, how am I supposed to live my twenties life? How am I supposed to like, you know, wake up with my makeup on and my sunglasses and, (laughs) you know, go to work the next day. Like, oh, this is so annoying. And it was right (laughs) after the time I was told I was never going to have kids. Oh, so I was like, well, if I'm never going to have kids and I'm like, what, first of all, what's the point of getting married? And then second of all, like, what am I doing all this for? Like, maybe I should reevaluate my life. Like, yeah, who knows? Like, Aww. if I don't have kids and why do I need to make all this money? Why don't I just like travel and be like a beach bum in like Venice or something? Yeah. And- <laughs> just have lovers in every port type of guy. Right. You know, <laughs> you know it's free. I was like, oh, I'm going to be a free spirit. Um, I'm way too much of a control freak to be a free spirit. I work in finance. Um, if you guys didn't understand yeah. that already. <laughs> so so you you were told that because of the PCOS? Yeah. Yeah, I remember we talked about this a little bit. Yeah, and it Yeah, it like I was told the same thing. It's bullshit. Everything. They shouldn't say that. Like, yeah, people. you have a kid too. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so frustrating and I remember like when my my husband and I were married 8 years before we even started trying to have a kid just because we were just having a good time. We're like, yeah, we'll do that later on, you know? And I remember <laughs> saying to him at some point, I'll never forget this conversation. I remember where we were sitting and I was like, the doctor said that I could maybe never have kids and it's going to be more difficult. And the older I get, like the even more difficult it could get. And he like finally looked at me. He's like, I'm not going to let like, or he just said, let's not let a doctor tell you that maybe you can't like dictate when we're going to have kids eat when we're not ready. It's like, if we're not ready for that and we're just doing it because one doctor's prediction was that because of this PCOS, you may not have game, you know, you may have a hard time. It's like, okay, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But if we're not ready, then we're not ready. And I was like, fine, you're right. (laughs) See, my (laughs) doctor didn't even say it might be an issue or maybe it'll cause problems later down the road. He like, he like pulled my blood and I have an O negative blood type, which mm-hmm. I of course had RH during my pregnancy. Oh. Um, so like my O negative blood type on top of PCOS. 
mm-hmm. on top of like all of these other things like scar damage and um like a bunch of other random stuff that I didn't even think about or know about and never caused a problem until he started investigating after this miscarriage. And he's like, Oh yeah, it's a definite. He's like, if you have a kid, you'll probably die. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So I should like, should not have kids then like, Oh, no bedside manner at all. Um, And he's like, yeah, it would just probably be in your best interest if you like just never had kids. Because if you did, if the kid even made it to term and you delivered, you'd probably just die. So it'd be pointless. I'm so sorry that that person said that to you. I was like, I like completely reevaluated my life because at the time Ah. I was like in a long term relationship. I was like planning on marrying this man. Mm -hmm. Um, and then his, and then once he like went back and he like told some of his friends and family, like, oh yeah, like we got this, you know, crazy doctor and this is what happened. And this is what he said. His family was like, oh, well then you don't want to be with her because you want kids. Um, so that was friggin' awful. And I'm like, wow, this is shitty. And I'm one of those people that's like, you have, I don't ever just have like one bad experience. I have like, it's like a a layered cake of Mm. experience Oh, and like working in corporate America or living in Mm. Utah. It's like, not just like one little thing happens here and there. It's like this freaking tornado that comes through my life. And I'm like, okay, this isn't for me. Like, (laughs) thank you universe for showing me the light. Uh, (laughs) So when that happened, I was like, oh, well, I'm just, I'm just gonna like totally freaking think about my entire life plan now and like reevaluate yeah. things yeah but oh I remember it's wild when, to see where you ended up though now you know I know and it's like I work harder longer like more now as a mom yeah as, as like a solo parent like I don't even yeah. have like I record these podcasts when my son goes with his visits with his dad and God only knows how long those are gonna last um because it's like I have the free time so if there's anything I need to edit out on the back end it's like only yeah. on one side <laughs> yeah. not like both sides yeah so I'm just like oh I just I figure it out I make it work but it's like I would have never had the drive to do anything. I did like the bare minimum. I was like, okay, I met my quota. And luckily I was good at my job back then. <laughs> Cause God forbid, if I actually had to like work for what I was doing, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I just, I did the bare minimum and I'm like, yeah, like I did like $10,000 over my goal. So like, I'm good. Right. And then yeah, like, exactly. I'll see you next month. Right. Okay. See you. Yeah. Um, I would, oh my God. I was such a bitch. I would have hated myself. If I met myself in my twenties <laughs> now, I'd be like, oh, you're such a miserable person. Uh, oh. Cause like, I was just like a party person. I like wanted to hang out with my friends. I wanted to like, I, I worked really hard, but like, I also had that, like, I guess, cliche era in my life. Totally. (laughs) You were young and single. I mean, hell yeah. yeah. (laughs) You know, I don't know. I'm thankful for that time in my life because I feel like we've because my husband and I were kind of similar in that way. Like we both, we both studied abroad and we both like, you know, we got married when I was 24. So we like, I mean, our whole like dating time was just us like Matt, like being the champions of beer pong wherever we went, you know? And um... I remember competing in a beer Olympics. (laughs) That's awesome. And so, you know, but I'm glad that we like almost, it, it kind of feels like we got it out of our system. Not that, you know, we don't still have a good time, but it's like, you know, we're just in a different phase now. We have a two-year-old who gets up at like five 30 pretty consistently. So, oh, God. you know, yeah, it's, it's rough. We've tried a <laughs> lot of different things. So many things. We've tried all the things. Nothing it's changed. Just like, She's just uh, an early riser. It was just so frustrating, especially when I was working with Key Bank and they were like letting this 21 year old girl let alone we were in Utah. So there wasn't anything for her to go out and do an experience in her life. But like, just because she's single, just because she's 21, just because she's not a mother, you're going to let her work remote. But I come in 
to like, and I, because I'm older, because I have responsibilities, you don't think I'm as committed as my job to my job as a 21 year old. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, God, me you, at 21. The stakes are so much higher when you're a parent, you know? Right. Yeah, and that's one of the things sad. I love about freelancing. And luckily, COVID gave me the push to take. I was already kind of redeveloping my business um, before COVID, but then COVID hit and I was like, you know what? Like, if I don't have, if, like, if I'm not allowed to leave my house, I might as well just see what happens. Yeah. So Good I tried you. it and it worked. And now I'm even like, just like building a team to outsource more of the work Good. that's coming in. Cause I'm Good. like, well, it all happened because a friend of mine, um, her son was diagnosed with autism Mm. and he went to a charter school and the charter schools all closed and they didn't have any plan on reopening. So she was like, then left without childcare, but she was working at a job that was an in-person position and they didn't have any they just like, we're not going to let her work remote regardless of what the pandemic like advised businesses to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she ended up getting fired and she brought it up and I was like, well, why don't you work with me? Like I have, I still have clients coming in. I'm busy. And then she brought it up and she's like, why don't you like, have you thought about expanding? Have you thought about, you know, offering this position to other, other women, and I'm like, well, is it, am I an equal opportunity employer if I only want to hire single moms? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, it's called a niche, you know, a niche. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're going to have to help me market then. Uh, Cause <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how do I do this? Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. And then I, I kind of opened it up as an opportunity to, you know, expand my business and offer Cool. Remote life to other moms out there because I'm like, so I work awesome. so much harder now. There's it, yeah. this, like you said, like the stakes are just so much higher. They are. They are. And you know, it's just, it's what we need to do. And we, it's so nice to have like the brain break. Honestly, a lot of people I talk to, we do a lot of storytelling on our podcast of like, just to show other parents, like what, and I ask such specific questions, like, what does your day to day look like? Like show people, because it's one thing to hear the theory of like, oh yeah, that'd be cool to be a freelancer's parent. But like, what does it actually look like? You wake up with a two-year-old, how do you juggle your day? You know? And that was um, one of the questions is, okay, I'm going to warn you. I have five minutes before my toddler comes home. Just a heads up. The last question was, is it really possible to balance work and parenthood? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that question because I actually don't like the word balance. I'm over that, like, uh, that era. Phrase. <laughs> yeah. I like integration. So the, the thing that I loved, like the, the thing that really like clicked for me when I went out on my own as a new mom and as a really hard worker, you know, is that, Oh, I can actually integrate the two. I'm not trying to balance anything. I'm trying to say, okay, for the next two hours, I'm going to work on this project that I'm on. I'm going to have a client call. Then I'm going to go change the laundry over. I'm going to take care of the dirty dishes. I'm going to nurse my baby. Then I'm going to go back down and do a couple of emails. Then I'm going to put her down for a nap. Then I'm going to switch over and bust out and maybe another couple of hours of work. Then I'm going to do a workout. Then I'm going to get her up from her nap. Then I'm going to spend the rest of the day with her, you know, and it's just this kind of like back and forth thing that I'm not going to lie, take some time to get used to of like your brain switching and you need to learn what works for you. Like I've learned that I need about 10 minutes to kind of like between when I'm wrapping up work and maybe she's coming home from, you know, being with the nanny or being with my husband or something to like switch out of work mode and into toddler mode, you know, but that's, that's what I really like to talk about is just that integration and how, you know, weekends, I mean, part of this has to do with COVID of course, but like you know, we all used to like, or at least we did used to save our like chores or whatever for the weekends. But like now it's just all one like continuous time. It's weekends are a thing of the past. Yeah, they are because it's like, I just get it done throughout the week. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. And so the weekend comes around and like really the only difference is that we try not to work on the weekends. And so to do a bunch of house because we've been getting 
integrating it into our normal life as we go along. So my husband works remote too. Um, and he did before the pandemic. And, and so that's what I like to say. Yes, it is possible. I wouldn't say balance because I don't really know what that even is supposed to mean, but it's really just an integration of the two and find work really hard and and but we're also moms and we're also spouses and we're also friends and daughters and all those kinds of other labels and and we don't need to like separate those out and compartmentalize them so much you know it can all be with one big fluid day and I think it's really cool when it can end up like that you know yeah definitely a lot of people also ask is it worth it and I think one of the things they're saying is like I remember people, because I was late having kids, I was 26 when I had Milo, which I don't feel like yeah. is old at all, but like compared to, every, yeah, yeah. compared to everyone around me, especially like, I don't know, everybody just had kids way younger than me. Um, yeah. so they would always talk about, oh, it's just, it's not worth it for me to work because childcare is so expensive. But now that we're moving into this age of freelancing and remote work and everything, people ask me all the time, is it worth it? And one of the things I remember my grandpa saying is he wishes that he was more entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. Um, If I'm even pronouncing that right, I've had three glasses of wine. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I got it. But he's like, he's like, you're always going to make more working for yourself than you are working for the man. Yeah. And when you work for a company, regardless of your position, you're going to have, um, overhead expenses taken out of your wage. You're going to have, um, you know, just the cost of doing business. And then obviously Mm -hmm. that person who started the company or the board of directors or the board of committee or whatever you're working for, they want their cut too. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like season four of freaking Outlander. Like everybody wants <laughs> yeah. their little piece of yeah, the exactly. puzzle. Uh-huh. Um, Way so, to bring it full circle there. <laughs> right. You know, we're wrapping up this episode. I'm a professional podcaster now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so everybody wants their cut. So one of the things I've noticed is that I am now able to work half as a quarter as hard as I used to but I'm now either able to make the same amount of money as I did or more. Yeah, exactly. I was working almost full-time hours when I was still in Salt Lake. Um, And I was making probably three times as much money as I was when I was working at a big corporate finance company. Yeah. So yeah, freelancing is definitely, and people are willing to pay more. Like if you're looking for a position that- would normally be listed on like, uh, LinkedIn for, mm-hmm. you know, 18, 20 bucks an hour. Mm-hmm. You can freelance at 30, 35 because yeah. they're not going to have to pay benefits. They're not going to have to pay for your office space. They're not going to have right. to pay for any of like your, you know, any of that paid time off healthcare, whatever. Right. So companies are always willing if they're somebody who's comfortable, um, outsourcing that to a freelancer. Yeah, totally. And I mean, it's less hassle. And there's this really, a lot of people say, you know, we can't, we don't have time to get into the healthcare route. And I'm actually planning on doing a whole podcast series called, but what about healthcare? Where we talk about that? Cause I know that's a big concern, but people have this myth in their head around healthcare that, that, you know, their company pays for their healthcare. <laughs> Actually, that's not how it works. <laughs> I mean, on paper, sure, they're paying for it, but that's coming out of your salary. What would be your? Um, well, yeah, and- like th- you definitely have that coming out of your check. And then they get a discount for having a group policy because I used right. to have my insurance license. So they're right. paying like a small percentage as the company right. Um, right. compared to what you are. Yeah, we can totally yeah. podcast about right. that in the future if you yeah. want, because that's people ask me about that all the time. Like, I don't want to be a subcontractor. I don't want to be a freelancer because my company pays benefits. And I'm like, oh yeah, your company pays 10% of your healthcare. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You can make Um, friggin' a (laughs) hundred. It's okay. You can make a hundred percent more than what they're paying in healthcare. Right. Right. And there's, there's one other thing I want to say about that question. Then I'll wrap up is, is just about whether or not it's worth it. It's like, 
beyond the financial side, which absolutely you can make a lot more and you're in charge of your own raises, you're in charge of your own promotions, you're in charge of your own everything that there's more than just money to be had that makes it worth it. And, and for me, the, one of the biggest parts that makes it worth it is that I'm in control of where I'm spending my time and my energy. When I worked for someone else, I was not in control of that. If they took on a client that was a, an asshole, like I had to work with them. I had to interact right. with them. I had to put on a smile for them. And how much does that drain out of us when we then come home and try and show up as good parents? I remember, you know, coming home and, and just having to vent about a bad client that I had to serve because that was part of my job. So now my husband's affected by it. My baby's affected by it because that's the energy I'm bringing back to the house. I'm affected by it. It's like, it's just not worth it. And when you get to control the projects you take on, the people you associate with, the people you work with, and you control your money, I mean, it's just like, this is where I got to the point where I wanted, you know, it gets me all fired up. It's just like, this is parents need to know that this is a very viable option for them and Absolutely. something that can serve them really well. And ultimately my little secret about wanting to start Kenza is like, I want to ultimately use this to help change future generations, you know, because then we can really support and empower parents to show up and be able to parent in the way, whatever style they want to parent in, however they want to show up for their kids, then we're going to be really supporting kids be growing up in a way that's not, you know, having their parents come home because they're stressed out and pissed off because they hate their job, but they have to stay with it because of the healthcare or whatever, you know, it just can change so much. And so, yeah, we're just really about the question of what we do. We're, we're empowering and educating parents on how to actually go out and do this and what that looks like. And just showing you that this is, this isn't, we're not trying to sell what a lot of like, I think freelance, like businesses out there trying to sell, which is like, come live the dream lifestyle, you know, like it is that, (laughs) but it's also like, just come live a nice life, you know, like, yeah, come. It's such a benefit for mental health. Also, like I remember when I was working downtown, I would have an hour commute. I would have to wake up at like before the sun, get yeah. wake Milo up, which waking a baby up is terrible. Oh, they turn into yeah. a devil. Um, <laughs> and then I had this like tiny demon running around my house and then I would have to wrestle him to get clothes on and get him ready. Yeah. And, yeah. and I would have to pack my lunch and he would be angry because I woke him up and screaming and crying. And then I would drive, mm-hmm. like I would sometimes like have to, like manhandle to get him into yeah. the car seat to go I to know, daycare. I hate that. Yeah. And then he'd be screaming and crying the whole time and he'd be like fighting me. And then I would have to like drag him into the daycare, drop yeah. him off, drive yeah. an hour to get Ugh. downtown, pay for parking. <laughs> yeah. Paying for parking <laughs> is like, ugh. Yeah. if you're a company and you still have people who come to your office, just pay for their damn parking. <laughs> yeah, um, seriously. So I would be like, I'd be irritated and angry and guilty and upset and yeah. sad and like yeah. frustrated after being an hour in traffic. And then I would have to pay the $9 for parking. <laughs> and it would just be like the cherry on top of like you fucking yeah. assholes. And then <laughs> yeah, I, would, I would go in in a bad mood. I yeah. would just go in and I'd be like, I need like 10 minutes to decompress. Yeah. And then I could start totally. my job. But like, imagine any company people out there listening to this, any workers like listening to this, imagine if that whole two hours, three hours of your morning didn't have to be that struggle. Yeah. Like what yeah. would that do for your, like, I remember I would be so worked up. Like I couldn't eat in the morning, but I would get hungry. So I would always like take my break and go around the corner to like a coffee shop, mm-hmm. which means I'm spending more money. Yeah. Because I was so worked up in the morning, I didn't eat my breakfast. So oh. I would like go around, I'd get a coffee and like a bagel or like a croissant yeah. um, or a Danish, which means I'm eating out, which means I'm not like eating healthy, right? Because mm-hmm, how mm-hmm. much is a, like a Starbucks coffee is what, like 500 calories? <laughs> That's <Yeah>. ridiculous. <laughs> but then I'm also like, I'm overspending. Right. And then like, you, you know, you sit down at the end of the month, you figure out your bills, you, you know, 
maybe not everybody does this, but I still do it. <laughs> um, you know, and you look at your bank statement and you're like, you're over stressed, you're overtired, you're overspending, mm-hmm. you're overeating. Mm-hmm. Um, you're binging on just junk because I would yeah. also then have to leave that job an hour early, which my boss would give me a dirty look every single day as I left Ugh. because I had an hour and a half traffic commute back home, which the extra half hour, I don't know why it's more at in the afternoon than it is in the morning, but it was. And then I would have to pick up my son and I would, I would sit in the parking lot and I would just like for five minutes, if I wasn't already late picking him up, if I had an Mm -hmm. extra five minutes and I would just like mentally prepare myself and I'd be like, you know what? Like it's a shitty day. It was a shitty day yesterday. Like don't take it out on him. And then I'd try to breathe and I'm like, you know, if he's crying, it's fine. If he doesn't want to leave his daycare friends, it's fine. Like I would just sit there and like kind of hype myself up just to go inside the daycare and pick my kid up. And then we would go home and we would eat dinner and he would like play and for like an hour. And then he'd take a bath and go to bed and we would start this whole nighttime routine. And it's like, we had no quality time together. Right. And I feel like that, that time period of, me working in the city, it's like, I, th- those were crucial moments, especially in the child's development. Like, cause everything's so close in their early years mm-hmm. that it's like, that's quality time. I could have spent getting to know him mm-hmm. working on a system that works for us. Luckily we're yeah. able to do it now, but I'm like, yeah. imagine if you didn't have to sit in your daycare parking lot, like trying to talk yourself into being a good mom every single day. Like what does that do for your mental health? Yeah. And what does that do for your kid? You know, just like you were saying, but you know what, like you've changed things and you're doing an amazing job and your son is so lucky to have you like, thank you for you for not, you know, for just taking control and knowing that like, you had to do what you had to do in that moment. You had to do that. And then you changed things. And now here you are spending all day with him, <laughs> building a new house and teaching day, him how day. to live off the land, you know, and showing him what a successful entrepreneur, badass mom looks like. And that's amazing. I'm oh, so thanks. happy for you. I'm yeah. happy for you. <laughs> I'm sorry you had to move into the city, you know, and leave the mountains, but I know now you have DoorDash. I know. (laughs) Now you have DoorDash. The fires were getting too crazy up there. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I heard all about them. Yeah. No, but your story is the story that keeps me going, you know, that keeps me excited to just continue to, to empower parents to, you know, take this leap and, and to know that everything, all their experience can be translated into something that can really actually work for their families. And, and however, like I said in the beginning, like, however it is that you want a parent, you know, um, go do that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. Unless you're beating your child and that's not okay. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just told another mom, she was all worried. And I was like, uh, cause she is pregnant and she works in healthcare and her job Mm. really pressured her to either get fired when she's about to have a baby, um, which is going to obviously leave her with no income and no job, um, or get the vaccine. And she was, she's pregnant. Yeah. So she was really conflicted because not only, well, she works in the medical field, so she knows. Um, but like the vaccines and stuff, like all of that testing is typically done on men. It doesn't always like, nobody really knows the effects on women. And yeah. obviously no pregnant soon to be mother is willing to be like, Oh, I'm going to give my body yeah. over to science. Like yeah, <laughs> do all this testing on me and my baby. Like nobody is really comfortable with that. So no when way. it comes to like pharmaceutical drugs and vaccines and all these medical, um, you know, even procedures like x-rays and stuff, Mm -hmm. nobody really knows the effects on pregnant women. And with COVID-19 being such a a new strain and what's going on being such a new thing, she was really conflicted. And 
until her job was like, well, either you're going to be fired if you don't get it, um, or you can get it and keep your job. She was like, well, I have to keep my job. I have to provide for my baby. Um, so she ended up getting it and she posted her whole experience on Instagram, which I think was really brave because that's a very controversial thing yeah. going on right now. Yeah. I'm sure she got some not very nice oh, people I'm, coming I'm at I'm sure her. she got attacked because it's like one of those things, like you never want to share on Instagram who you voted for, Yeah, you know, cause exactly. it's like so controversial, but yeah, she, she shared her entire experience on Instagram wow. and her posts and her stories. Um, And, you know, I'm not entirely somebody who's like all for like instant intervention. Mm -hmm. Um, but I like commented, I'm like, you are not only like so brave, but as long as you're making an educated decision that you think is best for you and your baby, that's all you can do. And like, you're already acting like a mom. And she messaged me and she's like, cause she's 24 weeks. And I was like, it was kind of like around 24 weeks when I kind of like comprehended that I was going to be a mother. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you start like your belly really starts getting, you're like, okay, I'm getting kicked. There was an actual live thing in there. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, okay, I can no longer deny this until I die. Like this is something that's really happening in my life. Um, and she said that she was 24 weeks. And so it's like, you can do things early in your pregnancy that don't affect the baby, but then there's things that you can do later in your pregnancy that don't affect the baby. But in that middle age, like nobody really knows. And she, Mm. like I said, shared it on Instagram and I reached out to her and I was like, as long as you're making an educated decision that you feel comfortable, that is in the best interest of you and your baby, and you're making that choice out of love, that's all you can do. Like there's no right or wrong, obviously, unless you're like abusing your child. (laughs) Right, right like, you know, take illegal acts out of the picture. There's yeah, yeah, there's, exactly. <laughs> there's no right <laughs> or wrong to motherhood. And, you know, there's no, it's not wrong or right for you to stay home. There's no right or wrong for you to be working. Exactly. It's exactly what is best for you. And yeah, I'm like, and you know, to hell with anybody in their opinions. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I always try and remind people that of like, and I remind myself of this a lot. If I feel like I'm behind or I'm struggling or I'm not doing good enough or any of those just negative self-talks, I think, okay, are you doing your best? And of course, we're always all just doing our best. Then that's good enough. That's it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you feel like you fell short or you feel like this, if you've done your best, it's a period. That's it. You've done your best. And that's what it is. You've made your best decision that you could have made in that moment. You had your reasons and you just got to trust that. So that's amazing that she put it on Instagram. I don't think I would have been. I know I wouldn't have been brave enough to put something like that on Instagram. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But one of the best things about being um, self-employed or freelancing is that you can have those moments of grace. Like if you don't feel like you did your best that day, just move on. There's always tomorrow. But if you're working in a corporate job and your boss doesn't think you did the best, they might be taking note of that. And well, punish you or threaten you in the future. Yeah. 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 But I know it's not cool. That's why I like just being in control. You know, I remember like I'm a one year our company too. like didn't, yeah. Like did they decided <laughs> um, it was the day they were going to pull everyone in and tell them like what their bonus was for that year. And it was like two all days out loud. Gonna close. No, no, no. Like individual, oh. you know? And they were like, we've decided we're not giving bonuses this year. Like we didn't have a great year, blah, blah, blah. And it was, it was after you watched them put all new, like a bunch of new stuff in the office, all new computers, like all the stuff for the business. And then they like wrapped up by being like, yeah, we're not giving anyone bonuses. And I was like, you guys, like, I'm so (laughs) done with this. I'm so done having like my financial future. And our ability to like invest, our ability to do anything financially being tied to someone else's business decisions. I remember back in the day, that's how it works. You know, I remember back in the day, like end of year bonuses or Christmas bonuses were like such a thing. If you've ever seen anybody out there listening has seen national lampoons, Christmas vacation. Oh yeah. Where he's like struggling on, uh, doesn't he have like a bunch of credit card debt for Christmas because he was going to pay his credit card off with his Christmas bonus. He's going to get the bonus. And they decided not to give bonuses. 
Yeah. Like that is such a thing. Like people pay credit cards off of that. People, I know (laughs) people go on vacations. Yeah. Yeah. Bring her, bring her on. Yeah. It's, it's not cool. (gasps) Hi. Hi. You need to do a caca. (laughs) mom like right <laughs> well go ahead and share with everybody okay. listening where they can find you on instagram find you online yes. um and learn a little bit more about kenza collective yeah of course so um we are on all the socials at kenza collective and her name is Mackenzie, and that mm. is what it you know the business was named after shout out to jenna my girl good girlfriend for coming up with that um we're also in clubhouse where we've been toying around with clubhouse a lot so it's super fun at kenza collective and if any of this has resonated with you we just put out um a course a 29 dollar course on our website called you can do this and it just walks you through all the foundational steps that you need to take and learn in order to get a solid uh freelance business or consulting business spun up so we talk about how to price yourself what how to figure out what services to offer how to get a financial system set up what do you do about taxes you know all those like basic questions we walk through all of that and um help you fill out this a playbook we call it it's kind of like a business plan to just help you feel really confident about stepping out and booking that first client saying goodbye to your job or if you've already had to say goodbye to your job because of covid now you have the next step. So um, KenzaCollective.com is where you can find that. Awesome. And Perfect. I can't believe she's been quiet. This whole, my a two and a half year old has been sitting in my lap during that whole spiel. And she hasn't said a word. <laughs> and it's kind of, it's a miracle. It's a Friday night miracle. I think the length of her hair is a miracle. My son is four and he's practically still bald. <laughs> she came out with a huge, this is even trimmed. She came up with a huge uh, head of dark hair. No, no, no. No, no. no. Don't don't show her hair. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. Thank Um, you so much for being my guest. Okay. Do you want to say bye, Mama Wines? Bye, Mama Wines. Oh, bye-bye. Bye, Bye, Emma. Bye, I'm on bye. Oh, bye bye. Mama needs another glass of wine now. My great glass of mama now. Okay. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> Enjoy no, the rest of your you. weekend. We'll have to do this again. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Get down. Get down. Okay, bye. 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 <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the Mommy Wines Podcast make sure to leave a rating and review. To support the show you love, check out the exclusive branded merchandise on themommywines.com. Also, don't forget to check out the other shows on the MW Network. If you love scary stories and true crime, you'll love Tales After Dark. More shows are coming soon, so make sure to stay connected on social at Mommy Wines Podcast. And until next Wine Wednesday, mamas, parent and drink responsibly.